question is, did I, we ever land on a carrier with the X-35? No. Uh, that takes a lot of buildup. We, we have here a carrier expert, Bob Johnson, was the head of carrier suit at, at uh, PAX for, for years, and I think he, he can tell you how long it takes to get people up to, to speed. What we chose to do is take the airplane uh, and what we call field carrier landing practice, and they basically set up what looks like a carrier deck on the field, put a Fresnel lens up there, we get LSOs out. It's what every naval aviator does getting ready to go out to the ship for initial quals or recurring quals, whatever. And we, we started flying approaches. And we, to, right to touchdown, once we figured the, we checked the gear loads and everything. At that point, we went on and we started, we had a big matrix of, of test points. We started out with some easy ones, like what happens if you're overshoot at the start or if you're a little bit low or a little bit high at the start. The Navy has some fairly um, rigorous definitions, start, in the middle, in close, at the ramp, and touchdown. And we had plans to test various off nominal conditions. At the end, and after not, we only flew this for a couple months or there too, we were doing some of the nasty ones like high and fast in close, low and slow in close, low and lined up left, and uh, well, that's the AB airplane. That's not the Navy airplane, but the the X-35. I knew we were we were doing well when the LSO came into the debrief. I hadn't flown. I I just sat in on every debrief, and uh, the LSO came in to to give the debrief of the pass, and he said, that's the darndest airplane I've ever seen. He said, I will take him aboard from a, a off nominal condition from a point closer in than I will an F-18. The F-18 was our benchmark. We thought if we could build an airplane that was at least as good as the F-18 around the ship, because it's, it is the gold standard right now. If we could even come close to that, we stood a good chance of of selling this multiple role airplane, if you will. Well, when he said that, I knew we had a, a dynamite airplane. It was through the flight controls, the, as I like to call them, automagic flight controls. Uh, it, it was extremely easy, very forgiving to fly, and it just seemed to want to be on speed on, on glide slope. It's a really nice airplane. Bob? Bob's question is, are we using the magic carpet, which is a technique that the F-18s is using? Joe Sweeney invented that for the X-35, and they stole it and put it into the F-18. Frankly, that's what happened, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, we, we coupled up uh, direct lift from the, from the ailerons uh, with, with throttle input, and it was just, we did it out of desperation. We were afraid, you know, the, the X-35 and the F-35 have one huge motor. I mean, it's got, in burner, like 40,000 pounds of thrust. But when you're coming aboard the ship, 40,000 pounds of thrust does you no good at all. You have to be able to get from 20,000 to 20,300 quickly, predictably, smoothly. That's far more important. And with that big rotational inertia, we thought we were going to have problems with it. So we were doing everything we could. We put an approach power compensator in there, auto throttle, cruise control, whatever, as well as Joe's invention of direct lift of integrated direct lift. Navy had direct lift control years ago. F-14 had it, S-3 has it, but it was a separate control. I never could figure out, I can't do that <laughs> with the F-14. I never could work that other switch, so. <laughs> but uh, when you integrate it into the automatic flight controls, it just happens. I mean, it, it is sinfully easy to fly.